All right, so it's season one in the can. I figured I could do what everyone seems to just love. Rank all the episodes. Boring. All right, well, maybe not everyone loves that, but I thought it'd be fun to go through and see what I thought were the best and worst of season one. Now, this is just my opinion, and it's not really set in stone, honestly. How I feel about an episode can always change depending on how I look at things, but for now, I'm going to be ranking based solely on entertainment value. Anyways, I know the excitement is just palpable, so let's get this show started. Coming in dead last at number 24 is Space. Now despite having a couple interesting moments, the episode as a whole is rather dull. Not much really happens throughout. I mean at one point they have to literally say there's someone interfering with the equipment inside Houston just to give the agents something to do. Even then it just turns out to be some engineer working in the dark. The episode does feature the face of Mars which always freaked me out but beyond that there isn't much here. Next at 23 we have Gender Bender. I think when initially going over the episode I was maybe a little too kind to it. It's a very weird episode and feels like they took two different stories and mashed them together. A killer alien that can change gender at will and a sect of religious almost Amish like aliens are two very different stories that could have been explored. And then the abrupt ending of oh they just up and disappeared is really lackluster. Coming in at 22 we have Miracle Man. Another middling episode that while not bad is just kind of dull. They tried incorporating some of Mulder's search for his sister in this but it doesn't really work for me. The idea of a faith healer who starts killing people isn't a bad idea but when it's revealed that it's actually just Marlon Brando from the island of Dr. Moreau poisoning people it's kind of a letdown. At number 21 we have Roland. This episode is another dull one. The reason why I don't think it's the worst though is because of Zelko Ivanek's portrayal of the titular character. I think he does a pretty good job considering the difficulty of the role. Tracy on the other hand. Yeah like one of my commenters said, never go full Tracy. I do love the cartoony splat noise you hear when the first victim is sucked into the engine though. At number 20 is the episode Born Again. Not much to say really. The episode feels like a weaker version of Shadows and the case as a whole could have been solved by the local police department. Why was a random little girl who has no connection to a murdered police officer reincarnated as him? I have no idea. And why did he suddenly leave her body once he was avenged? If he was truly reincarnated as a little girl, wouldn't he still be her? Otherwise this whole thing just feels like a possession and not a reincarnation. Next up at 19 we have Lazarus. Very much like Born Again you have someone who dies but then takes over the body of someone else. I guess the only interesting thing is the fact that it's an FBI agent that gets taken over and one that has a close connection to Scully. Although Scully really needs to acquire better taste in men though because even though this guy is apparently my age, he looks to be in his mid 50s. At number 18 is the episode Fire. Not only do we have to deal with the insufferable Phoebe, but also Mulder's random fear of fire that disappears as quickly as it comes. I think the writers realized what a corner they put themselves in with that random revelation, but I'm glad they quickly moved on and ignored it. The character of Cecil is kind of a creep though and I think he's often forgotten when people talk about the best monster of the week antagonist. Next up at 17 is the episode Young at Heart. I like that we get a little bit more background information into Mulder's past, meeting his former partner Reggie, and that he wasn't always the rule breaker we know him as now. Barnett is another often overlooked baddie who was also pretty creepy. The idea of finding basically the fountain of youth is an interesting idea and what can happen if it falls into the wrong hands. Also look at his salamander hand, it's uh, pretty ridiculous. At number 16 we have Ghost in the Machine. Originally I think I would have had this as one of the worst. But thinking it over, I think it's a little better than I gave it credit. Sure, it's silly as hell and not the most exciting, but with the way things are going these days with artificial intelligence, I think it's kind of aged pretty well. Yet another episode where a former partner arrives only to be killed off shortly after. Up next at 15, we have the Jersey Devil. Now I know a lot of people don't like this one, but there's so much silly stuff going on that I always laugh at it when I watch it. I know laughter probably wasn't their intention, but just the picture Mulder receives from the homeless guy alone cracks me up. The one big downside of this episode is that it's not really about the Jersey Devil at all. It would have been nice if they could have done an episode where they actually tracked down the real Jersey Devil. Instead we get some naked, dirty Neanderthal woman who really just looks like a regular woman that they smudge some black makeup on her face. At number 14 is the episode Shadows. 
Not a bad little episode, and at least it was the first one they did where someone is trying to exact revenge from beyond the grave. You kind of feel bad for Lauren who lost what was a father figure, but now she's also kind of being tormented by him as he uses her to uncover who murdered him and why. And I still want to know how she's able to afford a house like that working as an assistant though. In at number 13 is the episode Shapes. Now I think most people would probably have this one a little lower than I do, but I enjoy my classic monsters and as by the numbers as this one is, it's still fun to see the agents investigate a werewolf. Even though they call it a Manitou, which it most definitely is not. At number 12 we have the episode Eve. Who doesn't love a story about creepy little murderous kids? What starts off as a mere alien abduction, almost chupacabra-like story, takes a left turn when it's revealed two little girls are in fact the culprits. Now they're super intelligent homicidal little girls, but still. With the way the episode ended, I'm surprised we never got a return of the Eves because I think it would have worked. Although if they get out, what are you going to do? Lock them up again? You can't exactly snuff out a couple little girls on regular broadcast television. Next at number 11 we have the episode Conduit. A good alien abduction story that helps us understand more of Mulder's obsession and search for what happened to his sister. The ending is one of the saddest things you'll see in the show with Mulder and Church staring at a photo of his sister while the tape from his hypnotic regression therapy plays. Truly heartbreaking stuff. At number 10 is the episode Fallen Angel. What starts as a generic downed UFO and alien investigation quickly changes once the character Max Fennig is introduced. He starts off as kind of a paranoid goofball, the kind of guy you would expect to be into this kind of thing, but it quickly evolves into a story about a man haunted by something he can't control. When, nearing the end of the episode, Max begs for Mulder to not let it take him, referring to the alien, is truly heartbreaking stuff and you feel so bad for Max. He really is the standout for the episode. The alien stuff is fun, sure, but I'm not sure why they decided to give everyone seizures with the strobe light though. Next up at number 9 is the episode Darkness Falls. Great episode dealing with basically glow-in-the-dark bedbugs. Is there anything worse than knowing that once you go to sleep some creepy crawlies are going to come out to feast on you? The one thing I will say however is if they're at a logging camp why didn't they just start some fires to keep the bugs away? Also if the insects attack when there's no light well what about shadows? I mean if the bugs were already all over everyone well if they're inside your clothing where there isn't any light why didn't they attack? I think I'm getting a little too gremlins too with my thoughts here. What if they're eating in an airplane? and they cross the time zone. I mean, it's always midnight somewhere. <laughs> At number eight, we have the episode EBE. Mulder and Scully track down a truck carrying the remains and potentially pilot of a shot down UFO, which is great stuff, but for me, the highlight will always be the introduction of the lone gunman. These three add so much to the show and I can't wait for them to pop back up. Besides that, it's just a strong episode that puts Mulder's quest for the truth just at the tip of his finger, but snatches it away just as quickly. Coming in at number 7 is the sequel episode, Tombs. Everyone's favorite mutant makes his return and almost becomes the victim as Mulder becomes the one to stalk him. Tombs, however, uses this to nearly end Mulder's entire career. Great episode, not as good as Squeeze in my opinion, but still very solid. Doug is creepy as always and he really doesn't have to try if we're being honest. The only real weak part for me is the way he's dealt with. The way the escalator was set up, I see no reason for Tombs to get caught up in it. Overall though, it's a really good episode. At number 6 we have Deep Throat. A great episode that begins to expand the world of the X-Files, introducing us to one of the most important characters in the first season. The mysterious Deep Throat is interesting because you never know what side he's really on. Is he leading Mulder down the wrong path or is he actually trying to help? I do love when Scully gets attacked by the supposed journalist though because she might be 5'3", but that's 5'3 of unbridled rage. Next up at number 5 is the classic Squeeze. Our introduction to Tombs is definitely a memorable one. Only 3 episodes into the series and already you have this monster that can squeeze and contort his body, making just about anywhere you go unsafe. You also have Scully's friend who appears and tries to use our agents to further his career as the only downside to the episode. It would have been great if Tombs got him, but at least Scully puts him in his place. I've heard some people complain because Scully almost becomes a damsel in distress, but I don't see it that way. She was taken by surprise, and plus many times throughout the series both her and Mulder save one another, so I think those complaining are in the wrong here. At number 4 is the episode Ice. 
a fantastic little paranoia filled episode where the agents are trapped in an arctic research facility with an alien organism that can take over the body of anyone it infects. Sure, it's a little derivative of John Carpenter's The Thing, but it does just enough on its own to make it stand out. Plus, it gives Scully a little more to do as she takes charge while Mulder may or may not be infected. At number 3, we have the episode that started it all, The Pilot. I mean, what can you say about this episode? This is where it all began, where our agents first met, where the conspiracy took hold of not just the agents, but the viewers as well. A great story of alien abduction and setting up Mulder and Scully's journey that they will be on for quite some time. At number 2 is the fantastic Beyond the Sea. Now I simply adore this episode. The cold opening is one of the creepiest moments in the entire series. Scully's father sitting there quietly mouthing words while Scully looks on lost only to find through a phone call her father has passed, is generally very creepy and sad at the same time. Throw in the excellent performance by Jillian, working alongside the always amazing Brad Dourif, and you have the making of one of the best episodes of the entire series. And lastly, in at number one, we have the Erlenmeyer Flask, a fantastic conclusion and wrap up to the pilot. Mirroring the ending to the pilot with Cigarette Smoking Man, placing the evidence the agents acquired in the Pentagon. Even though both Mulder and Scully have a lot to do, this is more about Scully than anything else. This is her journey on discovering maybe not everything she knew about science is what she thought. There might be more to it than just what we know here on Earth. Also without Scully, Mulder most likely would have died here, showing just how important she is to their journey. The death of Deep Throat was also very shocking for the time, and it was seen as kind of a nod to Janet Lee from Psycho being killed off, because people didn't really expect a character like that to just up and die. But for these reasons and many more, I really had to put this as number one. The show really takes off from here. Well, this is how I see the first season. Like I said, this isn't necessarily set in stone as depending on how I feel, I may move some episodes around, but for the most part, I would say this is pretty damn close to being accurate. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this ranking and I would love to hear how you would rank it. What are your favorite and least favorite episodes of the first season? If you enjoyed this video and would like more, Please think about subscribing, like the video, share it with your friends, and turn on the bell to never miss another upload. Thank you for watching and stay spooky.